Hey team, Chef Eric Gephardt here. Hope you're doing well. Today I want to talk to you about St. Louis style ribs. You know, everybody says three, two, one. It's fun to say, it's easy to say, it's easy to remember, but it's really too long. Six hours for uh, St. Louis style ribs? Come on, man. So what we're gonna do first, clean these babies up, season them, forget it. Let's just jump into the action. 300 degrees Fahrenheit, let's go. Three, two, one, way too long. St. Louis style ribs, we're looking to cook and attain a temperature of 300 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's go ahead and fill up this fire box and get it started. All right, one of the mistakes I see a lot of people making is putting too much charcoal in your fire box. Remember, we wanna promote great airflow. So let's go ahead and fill our fire box a quarter of the way up, bank it to the back, make sure we can see those fire grates or the tines in the fire basket, and open that draft door all the way up. Watch that fire climb, light it from the bottom, build up charcoal walls. This is gonna be a turbo start. Here we go. All right, so today we're doing St. Louis style ribs or spare ribs. This comes from the belly region and we're using Cheshire pork. Absolutely love these guys. Uh, our fire's getting started. Let's go ahead and fabricate these ribs. And I'll show you what I mean. I'm just gonna take off that membrane on the bottom. And the best way to do that is to sneak a knife right on top of one of these center ribs and just make a little pocket underneath and you can see how that's pulling up and once we get rid of this it's going to make a much more better experience eating experience because you don't want to try to chew through that and it's also going to allow our smoke and seasoning to penetrate the meat so all good things happen when you get rid of this bit here and I start trimming out some of these pieces that would be liable to burn up on us. Notice this piece here, we wouldn't just want to leave that hanging. And these look spectacular, ready to be seasoned now. Seasoning up your ribs, uh, regionally you'll find a lot of folks putting something on there, olive oil, uh, if you're down in South Carolina, they're slathering it with mustard. I find that a little salt layer in the beginning wicks out enough moisture to allow the seasoning to adhere. So let's go ahead and put salt down on both sides of our ribs and then we're gonna hit it with our sweet heat. We're gonna have another opportunity halfway through this cook to add more seasoning. So this is just a first layer that's gonna interact with the smoke. I love this stuff. One other thing I love about the St. Louis style rib is how flat they are. It's just so nice to get even caramelization on the grill versus the baby back which have that big arch to it. These babies were just made to smoke. Um, the sweet heat I really like for the caramelization property is going to give us a nice bark in that first hour and a half of smoke at 300 Fahrenheit. And the heat is just nice as well. So we've already put salt down and then we've got sweet heat and we'll caramelize together. This is going to be a beautiful thing. Today we're going to use hickory. Uh, I would suggest using whatever smoking wood is native to where you're cooking, right? So for me here in North Carolina, it's hickory, it's oak, it's apple. Uh, but hickory for me is just nostalgia, you know, it sings growing up, it sings whole hog cookery, it just makes me think barbecue. Now we're going to agitate these coals with our ash tool to make sure that all this charcoal gets incorporated fully engaged. The ribs are seasoned up. I like to sit them out for about 30 minutes to let that salt activate and, and let all those flavors penetrate before we put it on the grill. Another thing I want to talk to you about is wood chunks versus chips. I prefer chunks. If you're using a gas grill, chips might be okay, but for natural lump charcoal, you want these big chunks, okay? Uh, smoke is your secret weapon, but you don't want to overdo it. Two chunks is plenty of smoke for a rib or pork butt or even brisket cook. Um, do not soak your wood chips or chunks. Let me repeat that. Do not soak your wood chips or chunks. And I'm sorry if I'm hurting some feelings out there, okay? Three, two, one is way too long. Soaking wood chips or chunks, no bueno. Uh, throw your wood chips in the, in, the, uh, in the bed and then go ahead and get some of these wood chunks going, okay? We want full combustion and we wanna let it smoke for about an hour and a half. Two chunks, non-soaked, right in the hottest part of our grill. Absolutely perfect. We've got great embers going on right now. Uh, I can see, come on in and take a look. You can see in this spot right here, especially around those exposed holes in the, uh, in the fire grate, 
we've got good flames coming. So that is the hottest part of this grill, and that's exactly where I want to bury these wood chunks. So I'm going to put them right in the hottest part, give it a little extra oxygen. And as soon as we see combustion, see this billowy white smoke? That's actually bad smoke. And when we soak our wood chips or chunks, you prolong the period of bad smoke until it dries out finally. And then you get a little bit of combustion, but your, your chips are already gone. So we want to wait till we see combustion. And as soon as that we see that flame, this white billowy bitter particulate is going to disappear. We're going to get that sweet blue smoke that we talk about. Okay, it's about, it's about to happen. Here it goes. There it is. That's what we're looking for. And that's gonna give us that nice, sweet, translucent smoke that is just oh so nice on pork products. To make this an indirect cook, we're gonna install our half moon deflector shields. We'll put our grill grates in place. Notice the, the raised lip here is north and south, not east and west. I like to secure my grill grates in this manner so that when I'm cleaning them, they're not, they're not popping off and shifting. Deflector shields are in, grill grates are on. Let's put these ribs, rib side down, meat side up. Blue smoke is rolling. Close the dome and make sure we're running 300 Fahrenheit. So at this point, we've still got the draft door all the way open and the control tower all the way open. Remember, we used a small amount of charcoal, so it's not a huge, intense flame, but we have great airflow to attain that 300 Fahrenheit. If you're not seeing good blue smoke, swivel that top all the way open and allow it to clean up and then bring it back down, continue to stabilize at 300 Fahrenheit. If that temperature starts to climb, just dampen down the draft door a little bit. Stunning. A lot of caramelization going on here. I'm noticing some pooling. Uh, if this were competition style ribs, we'd be, you know, using a paper towel to get that off. I'm just going to flip. Okay, I want even caramelization on each side. Stunning. And that is great. Notice how the bones are starting to reveal here a little bit. Get some nice little pieces and parts caramelization. So that was 45 minutes down on bone side, and then we're gonna do another 45 minutes of smoke on the meat side, and we'll get into the wrap. Ribs been rolling at a delicious 300 for an hour and 15 minutes now. Let's go ahead and talk about the wrap, okay? So, I wanna do a double foil. Whoa, let's turn the wind. Whoa, <laughs> cut. We're gonna do a double foil wrap and we want it to be longer than the ribs. This is a trick I picked up in Australia. Um, we're gonna make the glaze in the foil pack and it's gonna happen over time. So let me show you what I mean. We're gonna take a little bit of honey and we're gonna go right on. And this is fun. If you got kids at home, they love to do this one. Um, I know as a North Carolinian, I'm not supposed to use mustard on my ribs, but it is really nice. Okay, it provides a little bit of acid that, that we love. Okay, and again, this is the glaze. Instead of using a pot and start mopping, we're just going to do it right here in the foil. I'm going to take some of our sweet heat that we used earlier. Next, we're going to take a little butter and just kind of evenly spread out these pads of butter. Now all we need is the ribs, and we're gonna flip them meat side down right on top of this beautiful part. Nathan, open that grill for me. Thank you, Chef. Ooh, great color. We talked about the beauty of the flatness of these ribs. Let's see what the, the meat side looks like. And that's stunning. Bones are showing a little bit. Okay, so we take it and put it right on all that butter and flavor. One, two. And now, that glaze, let me 
get really tight right there. It's gonna melt and all come together, okay? So right back on, and now we do our next one. The addition of some of these liquidous items and the, and the butter is only gonna help promote moisture content. We're not steaming, but we're helping that collagen turn to gelatin, which is gonna give us that fall off the bone or just a bit of bite, which is what we're looking for. Hour and 15 minutes, but remember, 45 minutes into it, we flip. It's been 45 minutes. Let's go ahead and flip these so they'll be meat side down. Remember, all of our butter and honey and mustard is on this side. So we're gonna flip and allow the weight of those ribs to press right into it. That's gonna finish our glaze. We're gonna give it about 30 to 45 more minutes. We don't want it to over caramelize. So you can even start tapering your temperature down to 250 if you like. Um, let's check back in on 30 minutes and we're gonna see if it's probe tender. Should be right where we want it. 45 minutes. Let's take a sneak peek and just see where we are. I'm liking the exposed bone right off the bat. They feel nice and tender. Let's use our knife and just see if it's probe tender. And look at that. Look how it just sinks. It's not giving too much resistance back. That's that's the bite that I like. Okay? It's not quite fall off the bone. That's stunning work. And the surprising thing about it. That's two hours and 45 minutes, and I think we're there. That's silly. That's that's not even three hours. I'm going to pull this rack, and we'll take a look at it together here on the cutting board. Uh, let's leave the other one on right now, but come on with me over to the board. We're going to slide our knife underneath. Look at that. Not even three hours, and I'm struggling to keep it from falling apart at those low temperatures. All right, let's flip these babies. I mean, clean bone dance at, uh, at two hours and 45 minutes. You know, that just goes to show you, it, it's so hard to write a recipe or a method exactly using times and using temps. I mean, three, two, one, way too long right this was this was not even quite three hours and we're at a perfect rib so i can only imagine if i did this for freaking six hours it'd be it'd be fall apart mush you know let's go ahead and give that a bite i'm screaming hot but i can't help myself oh my god that's stunning two hours and 45 minutes and that's that is hands down a perfect rib a great bite Again, you want, to see, you want to see that kind of pull just a little bit, but that is super, super tender. So uh, technique, being a part of the process, um, checking to see how tender it is, not just following a piece of paper, because we left that on, I'll be honest, I thought it was going to take longer than that, two hours and 45 minutes to have St. Louis style ribs done. Fantastic, you know. If I knew that I could get this done every time in under three hours, I'd be cooking ribs all the time. So maybe, maybe this is this is it, right? I'll reiterate: one hour and fifteen minutes at three hundred with smoke, and then wrap it. And remember how we did the crisscross applesauce with the uh, not applesauce, but we we put we put mustard, we put honey in there, we put some seasoning in there, and we put some butter in there, providing that moisture content to help break it down a little bit. Forty-five minutes. 45 minutes and then here we are together enjoying perfectly cooked ribs an hour or sorry two hours and 45 minutes into it this is ridiculous so um, always remember don't just trust a recipe or a method the meat will tell you when it's done look at that great bark I can't say enough good things about this I got to go in for one more bite I mean look at that that's that's silly let's uh, look out look out just I'm gonna do the bite just so you can see how, how it's still. Yeah, that's ridiculous. All right, folks, if you enjoyed this video or this method, 
as much as uh, as we did, don't forget to subscribe, like, do leave us a comment. Uh, let me know how you like to do your ribs. Do you like baby back better than St. Louis or St. Louis better than baby back? I'm a St. Louis guy. Uh, from our backyard to yours, cheers and happy grilling. <laughs>